my, my story really starts with my dad's story. Um, my dad, he was, uh, he was the firstborn son to my grandfather. My grandfather had like nine wives <laughs> and he kept on having daughters. And that's just the culture because my grandfather was a chief in the Yoruba tribe. So in, in European and Western culture, we refer to royalty as king, queen, prince, princess, Dutch, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But in African culture, especially West African culture, royalty is referred to as your last name and by chief. So because my father was the firstborn son, he just naturally inherited that title of chief. Um, when my dad was eight, his father died, and, my, and, and all the wives scattered with their kids, and my dad went down to the, uh, to the south of Nigeria, and or like right on the coast in the area of Lagos. And when he got there, there were missionaries, Christian missionaries there, but not only were they teaching the Bible, but they were teaching math, science, literature, you know, English, you know, all of the, you know, concepts that we learn in, in Western school. And my dad was a savant because, you know, he grew up Muslim, so... He had the Quran memorized, and so he was able to memorize math and science and equations, all of this, so much so that as he grew, he ended up getting a full-ride scholarship to study engineering and architecture in London. So he moved to London, and he graduated from both with his master's in architecture and engineering and started getting dabbling in business. He was one of the uh, first black men on the board of the World Trade Center in New York City. Um, his, one of his good friends is the architect, was the architect of the World Trade, the Twin Towers. Um, and my dad was also the first black man on a financial planning council in Great Britain. So my dad began to like, you know, just blow up, so to speak, and do all these amazing things in the business world. But he had this mindset of going back to Nigeria because in his mind, he hated the concept that the, 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 the notion that Africans are a bunch of uneducated bush people who are stupid and they just throw spears and all of this stuff. And he wanted to change that narrative. So he went back to Nigeria, which is the richest, one of the richest countries in all of Africa, primarily because of their oil, their cocoa, their coal, mm -hmm. natural gas, all of that stuff. And he went back to essentially establish an entire uh, business sector. And there's so much more to the story. I won't, I'll just get straight to the point. But that's kind of where, where I came along. He met my mother. My mother grew up in the Bronx. And, and my mom and my dad, my dad was actually on a business trip in, in New York and he went to the Metropolitan Museum of Natural History. And my mom just happened to be there, look, you know, cause there was an exhibit on Yoruba, Yoruba uh, arts and my dad was Yoruba tribe and they met. And you know, my mom being a New Yorker, my dad's hitting on her he's telling her, yeah, I'm a chief, I'm this. And my mom's like, get out of here, man. Like get out of here with that. You know, my mom's a New Yorker, you know, she grew up in the Bronx. But, you know, he ended up swabbing her, and long story short, they got married five months later, and she moved to Africa. So I tell wow. people all the time, my mom and dad's story is a real coming to America story. They stole my mom and dad's story. For real. <laughs> so when she comes to Nigeria, you know, my brother's born. He's a year older than me. And then I was born, and, uh, and, and I was born into wealth. My dad was a millionaire. Um, he, you know, he... Yeah, he had all of these businesses. We lived on a compound. We had nannies, cars, drivers. We traveled the world to Paris, New York. I mean, we had it all. And uh, my dad, he invested millions of dollars in, in um, the Lagoon Development Project, which is one of the first man-made islands in the world. It exists to this day. Uh, and you're familiar with, you know, with hip-hop, so I'm sure you know Afrobeats. And, you know, Afrobeats is, is, is massive in Nigeria. The Vito, all of those guys, the Banj, all of those guys. And so they all refer to, to Lagoon, to the island now, as Billionaire's Island in slang because Billionaire's, the richest African in the world, lives on Banana Island now. So my dad, he had took what was a lagoon and turned it into an island. And long story short, the Nigerian government stripped it from him. And he had millions of dollars wrapped up, so much so that my mother would tell my dad all the time, Bio, I don't trust this government system here because Nigeria's just been historically a corrupt country. And my mom would say, put money back in New Jersey, put money back in New York. So if something happens, we have something to go back to. And my dad would tell my mother, my priority is Africa. My priority is Africa. Once I get the, the, the uh, Lagoon Development Project off the ground and we've, we're selling plots of land and we have the, the office space on like then we'll put money in, in the states. But right now, this is my priority. And when the Nigerian government stripped that island, he had so much of his wealth wrapped up in it that he was now on fumes financially. And so he went to go fight the Nigerian government in court and weeks later he died of a heart attack. 
And so when he died, there was nobody left to fight. My older half brother, because my dad was married a year before he met my mother, he was just out of law school and educated in Great Britain. So he's here in, in Africa trying to learn the system and they're laughing at him because, you know, he's an outsider at this point. So, you know, long story short, we were left with nothing. And my mother being a New Yorker was like, there's no way I'm raising my kids here in Africa. And that's when she brought us to the Bronx. And I was five. That was 1987. I was five. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yo, that is such an incredible story. Like, to start yeah. your life out. That's insane. Yeah. Your, your, yeah. your dad was an engineer, correct? Engineer. Yeah, he was an engineer. Matt, he, has a, he had his master's in engineering. Oh my goodness. So to yeah. the, you know, and I guess we'll get into it later in the yeah. conversation, but the government was that corrupt that they saw his vision for yeah. Laguna Island and just stripped it from it. They, they yeah. understood what it was going to become. Yeah. So I'll, I'll kind of give you some more context. I, I explained it all in my book, but I'll give a little bit more context. So back in the seventies, my dad, he bought this plot of land called Marico. And Marico was like, just think of a landfill. Marico was a massive landfill in Africa. And my dad bought it because he wanted, to, he wanted to, to create his vision, this, this city in Marico. However, around the 70s, there was a military coup. The military took over the government and overthrew the president. Around that time when that happened, the government said, Marico, nope, you can't have that. They took Marico from my dad for like 10 years, especially after the regime was, was the, the, the regime was, was overthrown. My dad fought and fought and fought. And finally, the federal government looked at the case, the, the Nigerian federal government, and they said, you know what? This land was yours. You paid 8 million pounds for it. We are, what do you want? We can't, do you want it back? Do you want your money back, what do you want? And my dad, understanding the Nigerian system, again, Nigeria is, is consistently ranked every year. There's a, a corruption overwatch committee, international, and, and they consistently rank at the top, you know? Is that to how this day? To that this day. How do you become a governor and, and, or a, a politician and you come out a billionaire? <laughs> how do you become a general in the army and then you come out the army a billionaire. <laughs> I can send you articles, and I mean, it's, it's Nigerians will tell you. I mean, I'm not saying anything that's not like go to night, go to Nigeria. There's tons of articles about it. I get messages from Nigerians on, on social media all the time. Remy, please come to Nigeria and go in with politics. You will seal you with this. We know that you can help us. The corruption. I get messages every week. I started screenshotting them because I get so many. Wow. Like, so. Short, the, my dad being a visionary and recognizing what happened in the past, he said, okay, if I, if I create something where there was never something, no government could ever come back to me and say this belonged to us. So when the federal government asked my dad, what do you want? My dad said, give me the lagoon, which give me the swamp, give me water. And they laughed at my dad. They were just like, this fool, what is he going to do with water? But my dad, being an engineer, he hired he had he hired a dredging uh, company out of Holland, out of the Netherlands, and they came and they dredged the foreshore. And gradually, as they dredged the foreshore, the water began to turn into land because my dad created an island. Right now, when that when the land was fully formed, the Lego state government, because remember the federal government gave my my father this land to recoup right. the money. The Lego state government came in and said the foreshore belongs to the state. It doesn't, it never belonged to the federal government. They never had a right to give you what belongs to the state. However, they waited until the land was formed to come in and say, after my dad has spent millions of dollars. Where if that was the case, everybody in Nigeria knew what was going on. This is a year, this is not a, a two week project. This, it takes years to turn, to create an island. Correct, correct. 
What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.